there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with my first mixed media video. I'm so excited. All right, so here's some of the goodies I got from Oriental Trading this week. And um, this is the journal. It's a um, XL Canson mixed media pad. And I'm not treating the paper. I'm just going to use the paper as it is in the journal. So I'm going to fold around the back, the cover to the back. And that's what I like about um, the spiral bound books. No matter what brand you choose, the spiral bound brown bound books are nice because they lay flat and then what I've done is I found this um oh, one of those Dollar Tree disposable cutting mats you get two in a package for a dollar and I'm just going to set that in my book here just so that um so that if if I do get a little crazy with the ink I don't know how this paper is going to behave uh, I don't want it to bleed through to the other sheet oops I got two there so I'm gonna put that in I might end up trimming this down uh to the size of the book but um, I think it's fine like that for today and I'm just gonna do some sketching and this uh, mechanical pencil came in the set of um, five it was five micron pens and one pencil so I'm actually just gonna sketch on a dragonfly I want it to take up a good amount of the uh, paper so I am actually just gonna roughly sketch it in with a pencil and then do some inking and so this is my first uh, journal art journaly page and um, hopefully not my last because I am um, looking forward to doing a bunch of these tutorials um, so you know bear with me I hope that uh, that it is insightful uh, my wings too short but that's all right we're just gonna play with some techniques here today anyway so yeah it, proportionately that should be a lot longer but we're just gonna we're gonna go with it and there and I think I've got enough I've got enough of the um, the detail put out, I think, so that I can go ahead and grab some pens. So you can see on the end of the pens, I don't know if you can on the video, hopefully, um, they have different sizes. Um, so the tiniest one being a 005, then a 03, then a 08, then a 1, and then a brush. Um, so I don't want to use anything too tiny. I think I'll go with a 03. And I'm just going to start adding in some details. This is probably dull. I hope not. Um, but I like to start with my basic shapes and then go in and add details just because uh, I think it's a little easier to approach it that way. That way you don't end anything too out of whack. I mean, obviously my wings are too short, but this is not, you know, a realistic drawing. It's just a, um, you know, it's a fun, fun warm up. I haven't, I just came down to my studio, turned on my little space heater and, um, you know, just warming up for a day of creating. So I'm going to keep it quite loose and sketchy, just kind of get some of these shapes and patterns on the dragonfly so I can play with coloring it uh, with some inks. Oh, there goes the furnace. I actually waited for the furnace to shut off, but apparently it's got more heating it wants to do. Unfortunately, not in my gold studio. And there we go. And I'm just going to you know, throw in some pattern here. I'm going to do a lot of the work with the inks, so I just kind of want to just get a little bit of a, a little bit of a shape there. And then um, I don't think I'm going to put much detail in the wings because I think I would like to maybe use a stencil later and just kind of spray on some random detail. All right, and the pen works quite well on this paper. Um, we'll switch over to the brush to do the legs. Got a very fine brush point, and just want to keep it kind of easy and breezy. The segmented legs there. All right. So for the inks, what I did was um oh. I'm going to be using some Twinkling H2O's, so to prepare them, I actually sprayed them with water a couple minutes ago. And I'm going to do it again. That just softens up the paint so that it's ready to go when you are. And then I um, took these three colors down here, these three colors up here, and I put them in the wells there. But what I think I should have done was actually put them here and then brought them over to mix. But since I'm only using six colors, I really don't plan on mixing them on the palette. I think I'm going to be all right. Um, and I don't want to put too much ink out because I think it's permanent once it's dry, so I don't want to have... I don't want to waste a bunch. And I'm just going to use a, um, a wet brush here. I got my bucket of water over here off camera. And um, really, I should probably have that to my right. Why don't I move that? I really should have that to my right because I'm right-handed. So I'm going to slide that over. Oh, pr 
preparation, right? So good with the preparation, as usual. There we go. Okay, that works. And if there's any whites that I want to uh, protect, I can go in with a white crayon. And um, I really don't think there are, but maybe I'll just add some, maybe some highlights here and there. I don't, I don't know. I just kind of want to see how the uh, resist works with the India ink. I've never used the India ink for painting before. I've done some pen and ink work with it, but um, but really that's it. So I kind of am curious about that. And you know, I just had another idea. I think I've got some stencils over here. I think I'm gonna just try. Um, I don't, this paper might be too thick for it, but I think I'm going to try just throwing a stencil under there and rubbing the crayon on it and just seeing if I can make like a little bit of a pattern resist over here. So we'll see if that works. I have no idea if it will or not, but that's why we're experimenting. So I've got a little bit of a pattern um, in wax over there. Okay, so maybe I will start, maybe I'll wet my paper a little bit just to give the ink an area to flow in. Um, and this may buckle terribly. I have no idea because I haven't used this paper before. This is the first sheet in the album. I thought I might practice a little bit, but then I thought, you know what? I think it's kind of important and nice if you can kind of see um, how things really happen instead of, you know, seeing a flawless tutorial by someone who's practiced it a billion times. Because that's what you see when you see, like, you know, the demonstrations done by the people that work for the companies. They've practiced it and you know, it's all perfect and, you know, and then you sit down and it doesn't happen quite that easily for you. So I just kind of want to keep it real and but the uh, the ink is blending really well on this paper. I feel like I want a little bit of a, maybe throw that magenta in there. These are really nice colors. I was also curious about the India ink because I'm a watercolorist so I was um, wondering if it would have, if it would behave a lot like watercolors. Um, I think watercolors might buckle this paper a little bit more than this is, but I, gra I grabbed some salt because I just wanted to see if it would give me that kind of snowflakey texture if I sprinkle that in. So I'm going to try that too. Oh, I think it is. I think it's going to. This is uh, kosher salt from the health food store. Any salt will work. The kosher has uh, bigger granules, so um, so you'll get some more um, random looks and a little resist work there. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to continue filling in the background. I think with the India ink, it's going to dry quicker. And once it's dry, it should be permanent. I should be able to go over it with other media without it um, lifting up. So that's another reason I wanted to try the India inks because with mixed media, you end up um, overlaying stuff a lot. I love that bright, transparent color. I think um, I did notice that it seemed like some of the inks um, were... I don't want to say opaque, but you could see the pigments in them. So I actually shook my uh, paint up before I put it down. Sorry about that little time lapse. I uh, got a phone call, <laughs> so I had to uh, I had to pause it. Um, and so I just added a little more of the pink and uh, purple up there. But what I was saying is that since this is going to dry permanent, I'll be able to add stuff on top, and I think that'll be kind of uh, kind of cool. I'm wondering whether I should go over the uh, the wing area or not. Um, I think I'll leave it. I think this time I will leave it. Next time maybe I'll feel like going over it. I know the wing should be transparent, but I've got a lot of techniques I want to kind of do. So I think I will just leave that be. And finish the pa painting in this background. And there, a little bit more. The, and I'm not, I just put a couple drops of each color on the palette. So you can kind of see that a little bit goes a long way. So if you're using the India inks, um, just put out a couple drops at a time. You could work from the bottles, but um, I would worry about kind of cross-contaminating the colors. So you wouldn't want to like stick a brush from color to color if you didn't rinse your brush out really good, or maybe if your water wasn't the cleanest, you know, you could be inviting some problems there. And um, supplies are expensive, so you don't want to uh, you don't want to waste them. And uh, again, these supplies were provided to me by Oriental Trading Company. They are now offering a limited supply of art supplies along with their craft and party supplies. So uh, you might want to check them out. I'm sure their um, inventory will be growing and changing over the next couple of weeks. So, you know, just keep checking back and seeing if they have what you require. So I'm going to go ahead and actually I think I want the brighter green for that. I'm going to add these little green patches in. 
just kind of throw them in with some of my brush. This is just using the paint straight on white paper. This is, I'm sorry, the ink straight on white paper. Just kind of putting in a little pattern here, not following my design completely. I just want to kind of get some color in there. Put a little bit under where the wings are going to show. And up here in his face, do a little bit of blue in the eyeballs. Oh, look how vivid that is. That's pretty. And for the body, I think even though Dragonfly isn't really that vivid, I think I really want him to be. I think I'm going to do um, kind of some turquoise because, you know, it's my painting. I can have it whatever color I want. Now, I am kind of deliberately going next to the area where I just painted because I'm curious to see if it's going to bleed and feather and run as much as watercolors because um, you know, I'm just learning here. And this is, I think... Because people were saying, I don't get art journaling, you know, why would you do all that work just to shut it in a book? I think part of it is that it's kind of freeing to be able to just kind of play and um, not really worry about the outcome. Because, I, you know, nobody else has to see it. Obviously, I'm doing this video, so you're all seeing it. But, you know, if it's a real bummer, I never have to show anybody. If it's, you know, if it's a bummer, I never have to upload this video. So, actually, you can see it's not really blending. It blended out a little bit there where it was really wet, but it's... um. It's uh, behaving quite nicely. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this, actually. Um, looking at the time. Oh, it's 11 minutes already. Holy moly, where did the time go? It might seem way longer to you guys, but I'm having a good time. It's uh, not seeming that long to me. Okay. I think I need something different for the wings. I am going to wet them and I think put in some different color. I'm going to wet actually the wings as they go right over the body so I can get some of that to blend out. I don't want it to be harsh. I want it to be a little softer. And since that ink has not dried yet, that's why it's lifting. You can see on areas where the ink was applied drier, it's not lifting. So um, that's a combination of the paper and the type of ink that that is. I'm going to go in with some of this blue. And it might bleed into my background because I, you know, I'm not really waiting for things to dry today because I don't have that much time to to let it dry in my 20 minute video window. I'm thinking I got a uh, I got a high definition webcam. I might try doing kind of one of these tutorials in real time and kind of telling you what the supplies are ahead of time so you can join in and then um, paint right along with me. I want to try the Twinkling H2O's and I, um, I've i got my blue and my green ready so I'm just going to try this blue here. Get my brush in there. You want to soften them up first with a little bit of water because the cakes are really really hard. They're much harder than like a watercolor cake so it's something to keep in mind. Um, but you'll notice I'm getting ink on the top of that. Um, that will wipe right away with a clean brush. That's all right. And it's only really going to penetrate that top layer because it is such a hard cake of color. Um, they were sold out of these at Oriental Trading. I guess they were really popular. Um, so, and they, they've taken the, they've taken it right down. You can't even see, see it to back order it. Um, but they do offer Perlex. Uh, it's a cute little set of Perlex watercolors. There's 12 in a little CD size case, so it's easy to store. Um, so they have that there, which would be comparable to the Twinkling H2O's, I think. Because um, I've made paints with my Perlex, it works really well. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit of green on the body, a little bit of this green Twinkling H2O. And I'm just going to go right over that wet paint. And probably won't be able to tell what it looks like until I dry it. I just want a little shimmer in there. And then I was thinking that, um, I was looking at this white ink, and I was thinking, well, I got white paper, what am I going to use this for? And then I thought maybe I would use it kind of like a spray mist with some stencils. So what I think I'm going to do is pause the camera and see if I can dry this out. And then we can put some layers with some stencils and some, um, and some of these other inks. So hold on, I'll be back after I dry this. All right, I dried this off and I brushed off my, uh, my salt. So you can see kind of the cool texture there. Let me zoom in. You can see the cool salty texture. That's kind of neat. Um, and now I am going to um, I'm going to put some of this white ink here. And you can see it comes when you get them. They have this like kind of little covering here, which I'm probably going to drop in there. There we go. And I'm going to pour some right into that white section there. 
and I'm going to do the same with the black and I'm actually going to use this with a toothbrush to create my own little mists from the inks and because I um cut because he's a permanent I'm afraid if I put these in a spray bottle with like diluted with water then they're going to clog because they are um because they are um, in India a permanent ink so what I want to do I think um, I've got a whole folder of stencils over here let me grab those and find something to throw over there maybe maybe that grab a few just in case maybe that one I kind of like that one the one that I was using earlier okay I think I'll go with the white first just because I know that's not gonna create too much of a problem so I'm dipping my brush in there it's kind of the consistency of milk already so I don't think I need to dilute it and then I'm just going to spray and I'm really glad I put the um, I'm really glad I put the mat down underneath there because I did get it did leak like all the um, it didn't leak through the paper but off the edges and stuff so I wanted to make sure that uh, that I didn't mess anything up there I'm gonna just dip right into that black don't want to cover over my uh, dragonfly too much. Probably not a great idea if you spend a lot of money to get your nails to try this technique because your nails are going to be trashed. And I'm going to do a little bit of black over there. I will have to rinse this off if I go back into the white again. I'm also kind of curious to let the paint dry in the palette and see if I can reactivate it a bit with water or alcohol or something. So I'll let you know how that goes on the next mixed media video. Now the cool thing about stencils is that um, you know we're getting this really covered with ink here so what I can do is remove it and I can actually press it down somewhere else and use that use it as a stamp so there you kind of like two for the price or one there this is this art journaling thing's kind of fun I have to say I won't be jur actually journaling because I can't write upside down look at my hands oh my gosh um hopefully I have a tissue around here I can wipe my hands off with okay and then the other use I wanted to try was just kind of dipping in some of the um the ink right from the bottle so I'm just going to give this a shake and try maybe sketching on some details of the uh of the wing here I don't know about this glass pen we'll give it a try it's kind of more of a novelty than anything else um I'm just sketching on a pattern there. This is a very fine tip pen. I don't know if you can see anything or not that I'm drawing here. It's hard to tell from that little monitor whether you'll be able to see anything. Maybe I'll switch to a thicker pen. Uh, let's try this one. I don't know. I've uh, left my pens in various states of um, neglect, so I don't know if... Oh yeah, that's working all right. I'm not going to worry about it because this is just practice, it's just fun. I'm not expecting this to be hung up anywhere and I think that's kind of what the uh, the whole purpose of an art journal is, just to kind of have fun and maybe try some techniques. And I think that would even be kind of fun to just take a wet brush and drag it along the edge and soften it. Oh, I like that. And then maybe even add a little bit more of that pearl stuff to it while I'm at it. And you can see those first lines I made that were already dry have kind of um, have kind of mel have have stayed actually. So that's kind of cool. It'll add some more details up here to this top one. Um, a little brush of color there. Just kind of. I'm just putting in a random pattern. So please don't uh, don't take this as this is the way a veins on a dragonfly wing goes because I am just making it up, folks. Oops, and look, I've just um, spilt some. And well, so I'm gonna add some speckles over here so it looks like you did it on purpose. So that's what you do. When you make a mistake, if you do it in other parts, you repeat the pattern, then it looks on purpose. So a little, little tip for me to you there. How to, how to, how to, uh, how to make your mistakes seem intentional. I'm very good at that. And with my glass pen, let me grab that glass pen again. And go on a little bit more detailed lines and I'm really hurrying because my camera's gonna shut off in like 30 seconds um, well there you have it got some some fun little techniques there that we've tried and um, I do hope that you dig out your supplies and give it a try too and maybe follow along next time thank you so much for watching links below to the products I used and subscribe thumbs up and until next time happy crafting